everybody. I think I just, uh, yeah, I was a little bit late. It's okay, it's okay. Just give me a sec, give me a sec. Sorry, birds. I wasn't sure I was gonna do this outside today because it's kind of hot, hot, Johnny, you know, as I like to say. Craig, nice to see you. Um, all right, I hope there's nothing. Oh, there's my, my beach towel. Well, not my beach towel. Um, anyhow, good afternoon. Hopefully it won't be too, here, let me, let me scooch myself a little closer because there are like trucks going by and stuff. Uh, anyhow, hey, folks, Craig, um, since it's just you and me, so how are things? Um, have you been, have you been getting any ice creams down the street yet? Is your favorite ice cream place um, open for business during this COVID? Let me know in the comments. I myself have been going on a bit of a, Maybe it shows, I don't know, but a, a bit of an ice cream jag. Um, because to me, getting an ice cream is one of those things that makes you, you know, it's like, oh, I don't know, let's get out of the house. Let's uh, get an ice cream. So there's that. I think tonight we're going to be a, bit, a little bit better, or maybe today, because it's supposed to start raining. We'll probably go get some fresh, fresh um, vegetables from lovely vegetables. Um, oh, that's too bad. I didn't know that Eccles has not been open. That is unfortunate. Yeah, it's such a weird time. And that's why I'm always telling everybody that when I'm doing these, um, whoa, <laughs> when I'm doing these Retro Roadmap Facebook Lives about certain places, please remember, please remember that I am speaking about some of these wonderful retro places as if they are open right now. Um, and here's the deal. And I tried this before because check it out. This is the 30th, 30th. That'd be like one, two, three. 30, 30th episode of these I've done since we have been um, kind of on the, you know, working for the clampdown as it were. Uh, and so I, I attempted, I've attempted off and on to be like, oh, is this place open? Is it not? And literally I could tell you right now, it some places is doing something and then I turn off and then they all like, no, they're only doing takeout or something. So what I ask everybody to do is get inspired, get excited, make some good plans to go some good places. Jeff Cooper, nice to see you. Um, but then do your own you know, research. I have done this before and I, or I haven't, I have sometimes not done my research and I have, um, showed up at places when they have been about, you know, they closed 15 minutes before I got there, that type of thing. So it happens to me. So I don't want it to happen to you. So if you're thinking of any of these places that I tell you about in any of these episodes, today's episode or any others, please just look to make sure that they're open when you want to be there. So you're not disappointed. Okay. So anyhow, Check this out, as I mentioned, episode 30, which is kind of nuts. Um, map of the United States, here we go. We had done, we are now on the other side of the Mississippi River. Um, we did that, we did Louisiana, Arkansas, and now Missouri, people, Missouri. And then as you can see, I've got little notes in here. And so the goal is my destination, it's not a goal, it's destination, is I am going to cover all of these states in Alaska and Hawaii, all the states, before, um, uh, what do you call it, New Year's Eve day. I think the last one of these I will do is gonna be California. It just feels right to do California on 1231. So I will be showing up from now until then and I will make it work because I think this is just so much fun. So we're talking about Missouri today and here's the funny thing and I'm gonna keep an eye on my little clock here and Retro Road Husband was kind enough to put it out here for me so I cannot go off blabbing about certain things. But there's a lot going on in this state. I have to tell you that I love the opportunity to do these live videos because it gives me the, the, the reason, you, you, you people have given me the reason <laughs> given me a reason to actually kind of do a little bit of a deeper dive, taking a look at the maps that I've created. Um, for Missouri, I actually had stuff on two maps because I have my state map and then Route 66 goes through Missouri. So I have some Route 66 places to tell you about. But it's just so much fun to do that planning and to discover some of the really neat, cool vintage places that are still around that you can visit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of hit the ground running here because what I want to do, and this is, this is what I was uh, saying, I easily entertain myself. 
um, with my bad humor. So right over here, if you notice, there's a bunch of dots on this road right here. So this is me saying you're going to get your kicks on Route 36 because this is Route 36 here. As I, as I go through them, they're actually going to be going from west to east because I started over here. Um, and then we're going to kind of pop down here in St. Louis. I want to make sure that I spend, because as you can tell, I've got a ton of my, ton of pins there. Kansas City. Kansas City was surprisingly awesome. Um, I found a number of things there. And there's even a few little other smidgy places that I found that would be like a fun place to, you know, do a weekend. It's not just like a one-off there's a couple of things that would make you want to go there. So without further ado, here's a general look at the state of Missouri. As I mentioned, we did Arkansas, we've done Illinois, we'll go here. Um, I'm going to put this down and we're going to get our, get our kicks on Route 36. So as I said, from west to east. So the first place was the Missouri Theater. Now there are a number of historic theaters in Missouri. I will not cover them all, nor will I mention all nine of the drive-in movie theaters, but there are t nine drive-in movie theaters in Missouri as well. And um, the Missouri Theater in St. Joseph was built in 1927. It is still open today as a performing arts center and it's one of those very opulent looking interiors, very Moorish looking. Um, so a really, a really kind of dramatic and historic place to go. That's the Missouri Theater in St. Joseph. Um, while you're on Route 36 going either to there or from there, you're going to go through, and those of you playing Retro Roadmap, Facebook Live, bingo, get your cards out because I'm probably going to mispronounce something, so you'll get that on your card, is Chillicothe is how I'm pronouncing it. And it is the home of sliced bread. Kind of like Phoenixville, we're the home of the blob. Take what you have and make the most of it. So. Sliced bread was first offered for sale in Chillicothe in about 1928. And I don't know if they do it now, but in years past, they had had a sliced bread festival. Now, just how fun is that? It's kind of like the fluff fest up in Somerville, the blob fest. I don't know, make a fest, pickle fest, any, you know, retro road fest, something like that. But I just thought that was so funny. So if I were driving on Route 36, I would stop and feel like, oh, can I get some toast? Can I get some toast made with sliced bread? Another one place I'll just quickly mention because I want to hit some of these really heavy hitters that I'm just thrilled about. But if you're on Route, 6, route 36 going from east to west or west to east at the top of uh, Missouri, I did not know this, but Walt Disney. Walt Disney was born, or I don't know if he was born, I don't want to be, I don't want to mispronounce, uh, misrepresent things, but he lived from the age of five on till a later age in Marceline, where there's the Walt Disney Hometown Museum. And so if you're a Disney fanatic or just interested in him and his life, you can go there in Marceline. Uh, there's a really more of an emphasis on his family life. But one of the things I loved was the, the raison d'etre, the reason, the motto, the why, as they say in the, the self-help is, of the Walt Disney Hometown Museum is because they want to ensure that the world never forgets that Walt Disney was a simple farm boy from Marceline who grew up to become the keeper of childhood magic. Sorry. Hey, FedEx guy. <laughs> it's kind of busy around here, but I wanted to be outside because it's so nice out. Um, so yeah, isn't that neat? Remember that even people like Walt Disney, he's not just a brand, but he started as a little kid at a little place. So if he did it, you can do it too. So a little bit of inspiration from the road. Another person that is on that east-west corridor right there in Hannibal, Missouri. Now Hannibal did kind of pique my interest. Mark Twain. Mark Twain was also has a boyhood home in Hannibal, Missouri that you can go visit that as well to get inspired about where people were. I don't think my childhood home will be turned into a museum, but maybe yours is, I don't know, but I think it would be neat. Mark Twain, such a relevant and hysterical and timely uh, American writer. Um, and then I found a number of these. I've realized, I've realized certain things as I've been doing these uh, vintage, you know, retro roadmap Facebook lives is I, like there are certain, and I, this is what I talk about, like with Drive Your Life, like the things that make your heart go like, ooh, I'm excited to do this is, oh, oh, this is excellent. Neighbors are singing. Anyhow, soda fountains. I get so excited anytime when I'm doing research and I find an old pharmacy that has a soda fountain in it. So I love that. The other thing I found is that there are some 
um, bowling alleys that I'm not, you know, I'm kind of like, eh, bowling, but soda fountains, yay. So there's a soda fountain in uh, Macon, Macon, Missouri, called Miller's Rexall, and it's got that cool orange and blue sign outside. Opened in 1965, Miller's Rexall Pharmacy in Macon it still has its soda fountain. So if you're kind of driving along, you want to do all that, you want to hit them, do that. Um, in that general area, too, is the B&B &B Moberly Drive-In in Moberly, uh, which is another one, as I mentioned, is one of those nine um, drive-in movie theaters, which how great is this? I don't know. If anybody has been to the drive-in movies during the COVID, pop that in the comments. We have not been yet. Um, I think we're just really sticking kind of close to home, uh, but I love the fact that the, the car-centric world that retro roadmap is is lending itself towards people being able to go out and do some really interesting things despite the fact that we need to be socially distant so if you have been to the drive-in movie theater during this situation feel free to pop that in the comment section also if you have been thank you don i was just about to say so this is perfect timing if you have any recommendations for missouri please pop them in the comments as well because people who are watching now will be able to see them and then people who are unable to tune in at this afternoon hour who might tune in later will definitely be able to learn from your expertise. So Independence, Missouri near the Truman House. I'm not sure if I have that, but you can bet that as soon as I get off of doing this, I will go look it up and add it to my list. Um, so thank you, Don, for that so much. Um, okay, so here's a fun thing. I did not know this. What I did is I put a bunch of places on my map, and this is this was kind of a new approach. And I, then I decided to just look at the map and see what places kind of called to me. And the neat thing was is that I found that Columbia, Missouri, had enough little things. <laughs> Sorry, I just read uh, Jeff Cooper's comment. How ironic that Gary Newman did not be in his car. He wasn't safest of all. He should have locked all his doors because it's the only way to live in cars. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, that was um, that was New Wave Mod Betty or New Wave Betty, not Mod Betty. So let me get back into the retro roadmap world. But thank you, Jeff Cooper, for letting me relive my favorite, 80, one of my favorite 80s songs. Um, Columbia, Missouri. So this was really neat is that I, I had found different places. And then when I looked at the map, I noticed kind of a cluster of them around Columbia, which made me think... You know, maybe this is a place that you're able to go um, and maybe spend a weekend. Pardon me, I got a, I got a fan here because it's kind of schwitzy here. So Columbia, this was my thought, okay? This is what I would do. So I noticed there's a place called the Missouri Theater. Ironically, another place called the Missouri Theater, kind of like this one in St. Joseph. This one is on the National Res Register of Historic Places in Columbia. Um, it is um, built in 1928, very Rococo, Baroque. Uh, Louis, Louis Couture's, and um, it actually looks very glamorous and wonderful. So to me, that's like, ooh, I wonder if there's a show that I would be able to go to and see there, right? Then I found this place called the Broadway Diner. Now, as you know, I'm from the East Coast, so diners to me mean these places that are built in, um, <laughs> built in factories and they're kind of shipped along. Uh, out to where they are and this was actually not an East Coast diner it's a Valentine diner and I know we've spoken about them before but the Broadway diner in Columbia Missouri is a Valentine diner from 1962 so it's it's it has that kind of you know overly dinery look the black and white check floors and it's probably got the boomerang um, formica and things like that but it's an actual legitimate vintage diner so you could eat dinner there or if you wanted to stay in your car do 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 do. You could go, <laughs> Jeff Cooper. You got me singing twice. You could go to the Mugs Up Drive-In. Mugs Up. It's been there since 1955 in Columbia. I believe it's still family-owned and operated. So maybe you don't want to go into a diner. Maybe it's a little bit too squishy, or you don't feel safe. You can get your stuff at a drive-in. Then this was a really cool thing. So sometimes, okay, thank you, Susan. See, now that kind of makes sense that there might be some of these things in a college town. Um, so I love knowing about that because sometimes when there are a few places that I discover, then I'm thinking, well, if these are the ones that I know about, maybe there are ones that exist that I haven't known about. So it's kind of fun to just get that little glimpse of a possibility of a place to go, and then you can go exploring 
on your own. Um, because the last place, and this was neat because I found out about it because I saw a picture of this vintage sign and I kind of went down the little, you know, I love to research and discover. So I went, went down the rabbit hole, or I guess I could say the duck, the, the goose hole, the rabbit hole, um, because Dryer's Shoes in Columbia opened in 1956 and is still open. Oh my gosh, an independently owned shoe store, not a DSW or whatever, pay less, pay more. Um, opened in 1956 and they have this really cool sign out the front. It's called the Weatherbird Shoes. So if you go there, you'll see this old cool sign and you'll see an independently owned um, shoe store. So to me, that's where I'd want to do my shoes because I can't stand, well, you can't buy shoes online. You, you, they hurt and then you're stuck when you have to send them back. So that's what I would do. So I'm thinking a weekend in Columbia, and if these are the few places that I have found, I bet there's other cool places to, to discover too. Um, speaking of wanting to spend a weekend someplace, these two interesting places that I discovered, they're not really, um, they're not really around some things that I found, but again, maybe you just wanna go stay someplace and then get away when things are safe. Um, there's a place in Washington, Missouri called the Old Dutch Hotel and Tavern. It's been around for over 80 years and it has recently been meticulously renovated. Thing I love about this is they mentioned that they were only three blocks away from the Amtrak station. So I don't know how many of you remember me uh, doing the episode for Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, uh, where we stayed in of the Amtrak station and then there was a restaurant within walking distance of that but how fun you could take the train take the train out to Washington Missouri and then stay at the old Dutch house and tavern it's another place I found because it's got a neat neon sign in the shape of a windmill because of the whole Dutch connection uh, there's also a place in Boonville called the Hotel Frederick now this does look like it's a bit you know in it looks like it's near like a tr uh, a bike path that you go to, but it is a landmark hotel opened up in 1905 and is on the National Register of Historic Places. So again, you wanna to go to the cool vintage places, those are places to go. So here is a city that I did not realize I had so many pins on. And I love this because I get to discover these cool vintage places along with you. Like I discover that this is my deal, this is what I do, is I go find them and then I get to find them up for myself, but why should I keep them to myself? So then I share it with you. Oh my God, my hand looks so big. Uh. I share it with you and then we both get to enjoy it. So Kansas City, going to Kansas City. I'm not gonna sing that song, but you know, if I do, I would sound like Paul McCartney in my head. A um, Couple of places here that I love and I can't, I've never been there, but I wanna check out for complete, completely. Yeah, a lot of them are food related as you probably um, no, yes, and the Katy Bike Trail. Thank you, Dawn, because I saw that too. I appreciate appreciate you chiming in with that. Always good. I'm assuming you're, you perhaps are a local or maybe just a lover of Missouri, and I thank you so much for doing that because that's what you need. I'm a, I'm, an, I'm a generalist, so I kind of, you know, parachute in and do my best to fill people in, but the people who really know what's going on are the locals. Um, anyhow, Kansas City, Winstead Steak Burgers. Now, I heard about this place actually re watching, no, listening to kind of a self-help podcast by uh, Gretchen Rubin and her sister, Liz. And I guess they're from Kansas City and they are raving about Winstead Steak Burgers. Uh, it's been open since 1940. I think they have a couple of locations. There's one that I think is a little bit more retro or vintage looking than the other, but big surprise, they are famous for their steak burgers and their chocolate frosty, which when I heard the description of it, it's like a cold frosty chocolate thing you can eat with a spoon. I'm thinking it might be similar to a frosty uh, thing that you get at a chain restaurant that starts with a W and ends with a Wendy's. Um, I've been to chains, I'm not perfect, I've gone there, so it might be something like that, but that looks like a cool place. Um, speaking of burgers, there's a place called Town Topic Hamburgers. Town Topic actually has two locations, like literally within blocks of each other. So if you're one of those people who wants to like collect them all, and maybe you're like with a friend or you just have a really big appetite, you could be like, we can get one burger here and then we can split it, and then we can walk down the street and get a burger at the other one. We can compare and contrast and decide which one's better. And I'm realizing even as I say that, I would pitch that idea to Retro Road Husband. He would be, this is what we call it, growling at the bowl. Do you have a, ever have anybody have a dog 
and you try to like move their dog dish because they're eat while they're eating and they're like, Arr. that's it's retro road husband. Anytime food is involved, he's like, no, there's not enough. I need the burger. But uh, Town Topic Hamburgers, um, open 24 hours a day too. So if you're in town, if you're there early, if you're there late, if you're in the middle, they're open all the hours. Um, and they've been there since the 1950s. Now, um, before I get into things that are not food related in Kansas City, um, let me just do one other one that's meat related because Kansas City on itself is also kind of known for its barbecue. Now I admit, when we go over to, when we do St. Louis, I will tell you about some wacky iconic foods that they have there, but to me, Kansas City, like ribs and barbecue is like, you know, kind of almost like a trade, not a trademark name, it's almost like a brand, you know, it's a type. It's got kind of a thick tomato-based sauce and Arthur Bryant's barbecue is kind of an iconic place to try when you're in Kansas City. So that's kind of like the meat lover portion of Kansas City and the ice cream lover portion. Um, but let's say instead you want to, oh, I don't know, drink a delicious tiki drink. So this is one of the things that I love because I love getting recommendations from people and organically finding places and putting my pin on my map because there's a place, now it's not vintage, but it's an excellent cool tiki bar. It's called Tiki Cat. You know, not Tiki Dog, Tiki Cat. And I had the luck of meeting the owner, Mark Sellers, at a lunch last year in Arizona when Cliff and I, I mean, Retro Road Husband and I were at Tiki Oasis, Arizona, out in Phoenix at the Hotel Valley Ho. And he mentioned that he owned this Tiki bar and said, come anytime. And so while we had no plans to be in Missouri at that point, I came home and I dropped a pin on my map. And now, even though I haven't been there, I get to tell you about it. So if you're into kind of that classic Tiki cocktail vibe, this place comes highly rated by the Tiki community and I can't wait to check it out. So that's Tiki Cat. Um, another place that is kind of neat along the lines of that independently owned shoe store I mentioned a while back is Michael's Fine Clothing. Uh, men's clothing, though, I mean, ladies can wear them too. Uh, been open since 1905. And this is another one of those ones that I found because I saw a picture of the neon sign. Thank you, Deborah Jane Seltzer from roadarch.com or Road Arc because she does a wonderful job of collecting all these places and I saw that on her site. And it looks like a really neat place, again, to support a place that has got the vibe you love, it's independently owned and operated, it's been there for, for I would say decades, but now it's been there over 110 years. My neighbor just started mowing his lawn. So I'm gonna start talking a little bit louder. Maybe I can shut the door here, okay. He's just going around the corner. See, this is what happens when you're doing live, live video at your own house and it's hot and you want to go outside because you're so sick of being in the house. Anybody sick of kind of being in their own house for a long time? Like I just, I came out and I laid down on the patio just to get myself out of the, out of the, the uh, hacienda. Maybe next week I'll be inside, who knows? I'll have to check with, see if he's got a routine here. Anyhow, Kansas City. Two more other places that I want to mention before I head off to some other places because I want to make sure I give ample time for the fact that Route 66 also goes through Missouri. So I talked about this. This is a bit of a one that would be on the mid-mod map. So you know how I have retro road map and I have mid-mod map? Like I'm trying to do this like cup your ears like you can't hear him it's okay. Uh, there's a place called um, Retro Inferno in Kansas City. Now it's not it's not a vintage place, but they sell mid-century modern housewares and um, furniture and things like that. And that's a place that I would totally go if I was there to check it out and see what they have. Maybe, maybe even be if it's possible. Now I'm not saying you could do this, but I think of, I want to be like Goldilocks and I want to try all the chairs because some mid-century modern chairs look wonderful. Some mid-century modern chairs look wonderful, but they I wonder if they're comfortable. You know, it may make a great sculpture, but it may not be a good chair. So that's um, Retro Inferno in Kansas City. And here's a crazy interesting thing with a slight kind of mid-century-ish twit, twit thing. Let me start it up again. Hallmark Cards. 
Hallmark cards are from Kansas City. I did not know that. There's a Hallmark Visitor Center, and you can go visit Hallmark cards. I bet you can buy some cards there. But check this out. I learned that there were some Salvador Dali or Salvador Dali paintings in uh, the Hallmark Visitor Center that you can actually see. So how cool is that? And the fact that the reason that they're there is because back in the 40s, they actually created some greeting cards with Salvador Dali paintings on them. Excellent. Ooh, the Elms and Excelsior Springs. Yes, I had a, there was a place I thought of in the Excelsior Springs. I think there is a, um, I think it's just now a, a public service building or whatever, a public building, but it used to be part of the springs there that looked really Art Deco. So there's that. Um, okay, you know what? I don't want to irritate you guys, but I think I'm going to try to shut the garage door. That's a little bit cooler. Oh gosh, it's kind of darker out. All right, well, this is what we do. And now you can see that I'm all kind of sweaty and nervous because my neighbor started mowing his lawn. Oh well, this is what happens. This is what happens and you roll with it. So those are a few things in Kansas City that I would highly recommend. Um, Fox's Drugstore, <laughs> Fox's Drugstore in Raytown uh, is a soda fountain. Um, business is currently owned by like, I think it's like the fifth generation. Um, they are actually not a drugstore anymore, but they're mainly a soda fountain. So that was kind of cool. Opened in the 1930s. Um, and then here's the deal. I love this because it's about halfway through the show, <laughs> the show. And we're going to kind of hit some of the places through Missouri that I was able to go to, uh, when I went on my route 66 trip last year. So we started, and some of these aren't exactly on the route, so don't give me a hard time, all right? But they are ones that are in the general area where you would be in the route. And I was just so excited to be able to take my Route 66 trip. If some of you actually tuned in when I was doing my Instagram Lives a couple of weeks ago, where I did an Instagram Live for every day that I was on the route, you might some of these places might be familiar, but you will still hear the passion of um, but in my voice when I talk about some of these so much so and this is this is what I do don't you like to hear something nice and unexpected from somebody I know I do like I was in a meeting yesterday and somebody complimented something of mine I did not expect it it made my day so I thought well you know what I want to I want to pay it forward so what I did is one of the places that I'm going to tell you about during this section I actually found their website, found their email address, and then shot them off just a quick note to be like, hey, you know what? I just have to tell you that every time I talk about my Route 66 trip, your place always comes up as my favorite dinner of all time, and I just wanted you to know that. And I just think it's nice to be nice. So I will tell you about the best dinner I had, but let's start with St. Louis. So of course you've got the arch, and that would be on Midmod map because it was designed by Aero Saarinen. It is an awesome place you have to go to, but I think we all know about that. So that's about all I'm gonna say about it. You should go there, right? But here's a place that I'm thinking that you might wanna stay, because I think it's the place I wanna stay next time I go there, is Union Station. Now I'm yelling and then he gets quiet. I'm just cracking up. Oh, you guys, I love how you're just seeing me kind of fall apart with this going on, but oh well. Uh, Union Station used to be the old train station in um, downtown St. Louis and now it is a historic hotel. Now I highly recommend, I'm pretty sure it's still there on my YouTube page and I will put a link in the comments when I stop this and I go back and watch it because I had a most miraculous unexpected visit there and saw this crazy light show that they did. I had no idea they were going to do it. I just kind of walked into the lobby around dusk going like, doo, 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 I'll see what it looks like, I'll take some pictures. And all of a sudden I walk into this amazing, like sensory overload Beatles thing. They started singing All You Need Is Love. I kind of got all verklempt and full of love. Um, but that's the Union Station. I would highly recommend that even if you don't care to stay there, that you go there and get a drink at the bar in the, um, in the lobby, because the lobby is the giant, what it used to be, the waiting room. And 
Here's the thing about this, uh, this hotel, I will tell you though. They have, it's kind of neat because they have where like the train sheds used to be and they have the train tracks in the back and they've got a pool. I don't know if you can go in the pool. It might just be like a one that you hang around and they've got a couple of restaurants or a restaurant in the back and they've got some stuff with neon. But I'll be honest, it's a bit like fake, fakey fake. It's like the Disney version of like uh, an old timey downtown or something, right? And this was crazy to me because I'm like, people, you've got an actual downtown out the front. Like you don't have to make it up and back like the safe little place that like the suburbanites are gonna go because they're afraid of like the downtown. Just go to the real downtown because there are some awesome places. For example, Crown Candy Kitchen. Now, these aren't the ones that I wrote about. Well, I actually have written about them because I love this place so much. Family owned and operated since 1913. They've got a soda fountain and they do ice cream. They do sundaes. I'm telling you, I had one of the best sundaes of my life in here because their hot fudge was so tasty that I almost forgot how tasty hot fudge could be until I had theirs. They are also famous for their, I think it's called like heart attack on a plate or something. Oh, heart stopper. Their hot heart stopper BLT because it has like, I don't know, a dozen strips of bacon on it. So that is the Crown Candy Kitchen in St. Louis. Now it's in a older neighborhood that aren't, uh, there aren't a lot of businesses there, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with the neighborhood. Be safe, you know what I mean? Have your wits about you as you should all the time, but do not let the fact that it's not, you know, in some safe, I, I keep on saying unsafe, but I don't wanna do that. It's not in some sterile manufactured generic place. Don't let that stop you from going there because as soon as you go in, you'll be charmed out of your shoes at how cute the Crown Candy Kitchen is. In a similar note, in the actual real downtownish area of St. Louis is Fountain on Locust. Now this is the place that I did just send a really like a quick I love you, your place email because it is so awesome looking. The story is so neat. And as I said, the food, the people, the decor, the music, like everything about it was like a highlight of my entire trip. And I had only just started my trip. Um, it's in a former Stutz auto show showroom. They serve classic American eats. Um, if you think uh, dill pickle soup is a classic American eat, that's what I had, highly recommend it. Also, I did have a hot fudge sundae there because they're known for their ice cream, their ice, ice cream drinks and their sundaes. And I literally had like this tiny little ice cream sundae. It was like literally like a smidge. It was like a thimble size, but it was all I wanted after I had my delicious meal. Um, they know they have our retro cocktails. They've got a, a, what do you call it? Like a radio show you can listen to from a speaker in your booth. Um, and they're bathrooms have actually won awards people go in there just to look at how awesome their bathrooms are so fountain on locust i'm telling you put that place on your map people because it is so awesome and i cannot wait to go back to st louis and i cannot wait to go back there and take retro road husband because i was there and you know how it is you're like you're looking around you're like i just want to share with people like isn't this awesome like i get to do it with you now but that's a place Another place that was so awesome that I can't wait to go back there again with Retro Road Husband. Excuse me, I'm getting all like worked up. The City Museum. Now, Susan Nichols, you, I need to give you mad props because I didn't know about this place and you said to go there and I went there and that place blew my mind. Um, it is this 600,000 600,000 square foot former shoe company warehouse that has been turned into a museum filled with repurposed architectural industrial objects. They've got slides, they've got caves, they've got the world's largest pair of underpants on display. And when you go in, when I went in, the place was kind of kids everywhere. So you think, oh, well, this is for kids. It's not for hu humans, <laughs> for adults. But it was actually so awesome to go there as an adult too. I slid down a slide. I rode, I think I posted the video somewhere of me on like the, the top that turns. They've got a roof deck that's open when things are safe. So the City Museum in St. Louis, totally go there. Um, and those are the ones that are kind of in the downtown. A Couple of odd things that I realized about, um, or not odd, different, different 
foods that they have in St. Louis that you might want to check out. One is very unusual. It is called, it's St. Louis style pizza. IMO's, I-M-O apostrophe S. I couldn't find which iconic one to send you to. I ended up going to one that was like attached to a business high rise or something. It is an odd, nope. It is a different kind of pizza with a different kind of cheese. It's called Provel, I believe. And if you are interested in tasting the different tastes when you're emos, thank you, Nicole. See, listen to me, emos. Uh, and um, it, is, it is a different taste, that's for sure. I'm glad I tried it. The other thing too, is gooey butter cake. And I love this because I got the recommendation for Emo's and gooey butter cake, which I didn't have a chance to eat because I had already eaten two hot fudge sundaes in the one day that we were there, um, was I walked up to somebody at, who was working at the Arch and I said, hey, I'm from out of town and I, what is your, what foods are your, um, is your town famous for? And this is what he told me. So that's, you ask questions and you get these neat ideas. I wouldn't have known that. You know, I might have eaten something generic. Um, one place I did know what I wanted to go to and oh my gosh, was I, actually this is funny, I'm serious and not kidding, which means serious, that Tums, you know Tums for the tummy, I believe they are, they were invented and are still made in St. Louis. And I totally was popping a few of those because I went to, um, yes, Evan Tritt, you're right, the toasted raviolis were another thing. Um, but I actually went and got yet another ice cream or another dairy-related dessert because I went to Ted Drew's. Now, Ted Drew's is in St. Louis, and it's actually on Route 66. And it is so iconic. You go there, they make, it's almost like a frozen, it's like a frozen custard, and it's so thick that when they serve it to you, sometimes they will turn it upside down to show you that it, your spoon is stuck in there. And um, they were great because I was, I, I mentioned this story when I did my Instagram live, but I ended up on my Route 66 trip sending, I believe over 150 postcards to Retro Road Mappers, which I was happy to do. I wanna spread the love. You know, I did that earlier during the COVID thing, but Ted Drew's, I was able to get um, a bunch of postcards from them. I paid for them, of course, but they were inexpensive, so I got a bunch of them. And then I realized how fun it was to let people know about this iconic place um, just by sending them a postcard in the mail. So that was kind of fun. Now, strangely enough, that wasn't a place that was on our Route 66 tour, but one that was when we started getting out of town and hitting the road again. Yes, a concrete, thank you. Um, the Wagon Wheel Motel in Cuba. So we didn't get to stay at the wagon wheel, but it is such an adorable little place. I wanna figure out a routing so that I get to stay in some of these neat old hotels the next time I do Route 66. Because the wagon wheel in Cuba, Missouri is the oldest continually operated motel on Route 66. It's on the National Register of Historic Places and current owner Connie Eccles has owned it since 2009, spelled differently than the Eccles that you know, Craig, just as an FYI. Um, but even if you can't stay there, here's the deal. You can stop by and she's got a wonderful gift shop. You can get like a cup of coffee, um, some kitschy or interesting Route 66, uh, you know, memorabilia, tons of books. If you want to have a book, you know, like the Route 66 guide, she's got those two. And we were able to take a look at the rooms there and the rooms are all done over in like vintage period decor, but nice and clean and modern. It's that wonderful balance of like, modern cleanliness and you know air conditioning and stuff like that with the old time vintage charm. So that is the wagon wheel in Cuba and another place in Cuba. Now how funny is this? I did not realize until after I came home, kind of reviewed my trip, that I had two of my very favorite meals of my entire two week trip on Route 66 in Missouri. They weren't on the same day, luckily, or else I would have been really full puffy, but I had the best lunch of my entire Route 66 trip at the Four Way, the Four Way in Cuba. It is an adorable place. It is in a renovated uh, Phillips 66 service station, family owned and operated, and here's the deal. Again, this is a bit of a life lesson and you learn these things, you're reminded of them when you are traveling, that you think you know what's going to go on, but you know what, sometimes when you, you're like, oh yeah, I know what it's gonna be. 
thank God the universe proves you wrong because it's like you don't know, so just be in the now and experience it when you get there, right? And I, I bring this up because I was thinking, I bet we're gonna go to a lot of places for lunches and there's gonna be like burgers and fries, fish and fries, burgers, you know, burgers and malts and burgers and, you know, all that burger, 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 burger. Like, you know, that kind of iconic, like happy days version of 50s food, right? So that's what I assumed we'd get. Well, what I didn't realize is that I would find a place like the four way and I, I will give the total props to Austin Coop from guidedroute66tours.com because I wouldn't have known about this place except for him. So we did have burgers, but this place uses all fresh ingredients, all locally sourced stuff. And there's like a Mediterranean slash Greek inspired thing. So I got a lamb burger. I got a lamb burger with like tzatziki sauce and like these great little t potatoes and it was just so delightful. Yeah. Hello? Oh, okay. Hey, <laughs> that was a UPS guy. Oh my God, it's the day that everything goes wrong here. Uh, <laughs> we got something from UPS. I wonder what it is. Uh, anyhow, oh yeah, I was in Cuba, Missouri. Um, had the best lunch. So don't think you know everything. And. Can yeah. I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Um, where's 133, 6L? Um, I think. That, the one right next door is 145. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it might be. I mean, it isn't right across the street. That's what's the street. What's the name on it? Sorry, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm doing a Facebook Live, so I'm a little bit distracted. Um, uh, Donald Belfish? Yeah, that's them right across the, just on the other side here. Okay. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Try to help. Anyhow. Okay. I'm in Missouri. I've had lunch. It was great. Um, so, uh, then along Route 66, going along another key classic place on Route 66 is Gary's Gay Parita. Um, now it is named after this gentleman's wife back in the day. Gary Turner actually was, it was, is the original owner's wife. And basically what it is, it's an old time Sinclair gas station that, uh, ended up being, um, uh, kind of filled with memorabilia and opened up prior to the internet as a place for people who were traveling Route 66, um, they actually ended up being uh, opened up so they could help people find out where to go on the route. And the place is filled with like vintage cars and little places. You've seen that picture. I know I've got a picture of me like all over the internet where I'm standing there in my like capris and my red rain jacket and I've got the Route 66 thing like in front of me and I'm like, ta-da! Ta da Route 66. That's uh, in front of Gary's Gay Parita. So it's a great place to go take pictures. And it's just a wonderful kind of thing that his family still runs. And people literally, literally from all over the world, all over the world, they come there because it is one of those classic stops on Route 66. So that's in Everton, Missouri, Gary's Gay Parita. Moving right along, like the Muppet movie, we're going to the Boots Court Motel. Now, here's the thing, and this is one of those like, oh crap, you need to carpe diem, but you need to wait till it's safe. And, you know, I wanna tell you to go there right now, but I don't wanna tell you to go right, right now because it is safe. Um, Carthage, Missouri, the Boots Court Motel. It's for sale. So if somebody wants to start their life over again and move to Carthage, Missouri, there's an adorable, streamlined, modern Route 66 motel. So adorable, wonderfully, um, renovated in many of the rooms to that historic vibe. Um, 1940s music playing out of the vintage um, radios next to the beds with the chenille, you know, bedspreads. Um, such an adorable place, um, Boots Court Motel. We did not stay there, but we were able to go. We got a bit of a history of it and we got to take a look inside. So I hope when we are all able to travel safely um, on Route 66 and beyond, that we that it will still be open because I would love to stay there. Um, I would love to buy it, but I also want to go see the world. Um, so the Boots Court Motel is for sale. If you know, tell a mod Betty sent you. Maybe if you want to buy it, I'll get a spiff. Um, okay, few more places before time runs out or before like another you know wacky thing happens today actually i'm going to open up since it's all happened and i'm getting all sweaty because i've been so nervous i'm going to open up the garage door again so hold on
this will be an episode for the ages, huh? This was gonna. This shows how Mod Betty just rolls with it, okay? Because what else can I do? It's live TV. Um, so now we're here. I want to make sure I tell you about a few places in Joplin, Missouri. Uh, we didn't go to this place, but it was recommended to me. Remember I told you earlier about getting recommendations and it was a guy from the Tiki Oasis for a Tiki Cat in Kansas City? Well, there was another gentleman that I had, I want to say met, but I knew him from back up in Boston. Name is uh, Brother Cleave. We call him Brother Cleave. And he is a tiki mixologist. He's a cocktail maker. He's a DJ. He is a historian of all sorts of wonderful um, tiki music and things like that. And we got to gabbing at Tiki Oasis and he and his awesome wife, Diane, were taking a road trip back home after Tiki Oasis and they went to this place in Joplin called Wilder's Steakhouse. And it was great. He sent me pictures. It's such an old timey place. Um, opened in 1929. The building was renovated. It was renovated in 1946. So it still has that quaint vintage vibe. Um, there is a rooftop neon sign, there's neon and all sorts of things, and it's a classic place to go to get a steak, to get a martini, and they've got all sorts of kind of period decor. So that is Wilder's Steakhouse. So I can't wait to go to Joplin, Missouri, just to go there. And like when I do my Route 66 trip again, like because now I know that's there, I will totally route us, me, you through there to make sure we go there, even if it's not exactly on the route. Then, because I had that pin on my map, I saw there were two other kind of adorable that I just had to share with you, adorable places in Joplin. One is the National Cookie Cutter Museum. I know I should use my, you're right, I should use my fan. I'll just, you know, I'll just get a sweat stash instead. How's that? Because <laughs> I've gotten up off of my chair how many times, people? Um, the National Cookie Cutter Historical Museum is in Joplin, Missouri. I did not know that. Another museum of interest in Joplin is the world's largest small electrical appliance museum. It's the largest museum of the smallest electrical appliances. And I'm just going to quote their website because it's kind of hysterical. Over 4,000 unique rare electrical appliances from toasters to percolators and razors to waffle irons. The owner Richard Larison states, there are pinchers and perchers, droppers and floppers, tippers and flippers, not to mention swingers, walkthroughs, flatbeds, and of course the ever popular pop-ups. Now, if I don't feel like I just read something out of Dr. Seuss, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that place just sounds like so freaking charming to go to. So I'd go to Joplin, I'd find a cool place to stay, I'd have my dinner at the steakhouse, I'd go see all these little appliances. I heard if you go to the cookie cutter museum, you might get a free cookie cutter. So I'd totally go and get my free cookie cutter and color me happy. So um, that's in Joplin, Missouri. Now, if we were looking at the map, which we're about to do, we will notice, mm, 3D, 3D. We were up here. We took our got our we got our kicks on Route 36. Then we came down here and we discovered all sorts of things in Kansas City, a few neat places to stay. But then we hit St. Louis, and we went down here, kind of you know, on the Route 66 or the um, roads that have represent or that have bypassed it. So Joplin is just down around here, almost at the Kansas line. Now we're not going to get to Kansas. I'm going to do Kansas. Oh, funny, I'm not going to get there till September because I'm going north. Visuals, visuals help. I'm going north and then down and then up, mixing it up that way. But there is a place that I wanted to mention because I don't know, and I hope, here's, here's an ask. I hope all of you have noticed or, or I've, you're aware that I have a Facebook page and a website and a mailing list for my new project called Just Drive Your Life because I really believe that honestly people, and I didn't realize how easy it was until just recently, to literally treat your life like a road trip and you'll find out that you're able to do the things you want to do so much easier than belaboring them like I had done for decades. So it's my way of encouraging you, encouraging me to figure out what's important in our lives and do them. And the reason I bring that up, well, first of all, I'd love you to you know follow it on the Facebooks or sign up for the mailing list because the more people that follow me, Book publishers like that when they think people are interested in what I'm doing. And 
because I recently posted about being at a fork in the road, like a literal giant fork in the road, and then there's the metaphorical fork in the road, right? So here's a crazy thing. I just posted about this yesterday, day before, on um, Just Drive Your Life. While I was doing my research after that, while I was doing my research for this episode that I'm doing right now, I discovered that there are two, two giant forks in the road in Missouri. So I got to tell you about them because it's just crazy. So the one I posted, a picture of me, that one's in New York. There's another one here in PA. I have a picture of myself there too. Now there's one in Branson. So here's the funny thing. Branson, Missouri, I'm sure you've heard about it. Total vacation land, whatever. They've got a couple of cool like world's biggest whatevers, like insert you know, superlative here. Um, one that I thought was funny actually was that they have the world's largest roll of toilet paper. Though I don't know, maybe somebody has absconded with it because of the whole hoarding of the toilet paper during the COVID times. Um, world's just largest ball of twine, world's largest toy museum complex, whatever that means. And then there is a restaurant there called Paschetti's. Paschetti, like when you're a little kid and you can't say Paschetti, Paschetti, you can't say spaghetti. You say Paschetti, called Paschetti's, and it's got a giant fork, and I'm not kidding, I think there's even a giant meatball that you can kind of walk through. So when you get to that fork, I don't know, turn in the right direction. And then in Springfield, Missouri, there is also, now this one they claim is the world's largest fork. 35 feet tall, 11 tons, and it's like stabbed in front of a office building in Springfield. And here's the deal. I love forks in the road because they remind you that you have a decision. Like you get to a place and you're like, do I do this? Do I go this way or do I go that way, right? If you go this way, you can't go that way. This way leads in one direction. And if you go this way, it leads in the other direction. So when you're at a fork in the road, this is me being a little bit like Maud Betty trying to give you life lessons, but Trust me, it's so true. Go towards the side of the fork that leads to where your heart wants you to go. Because here's the deal. Either way, when you go to a fork, you're gonna be kind of scared at the beginning, but if you keep on going away from your dreams down that road, you're gonna get further away from your dreams and you're gonna be really bummed in the future. Like I think of those times where I had an option to be like doing something cool or doing something safe and I picked the safe one and the next thing you know, in the future, I look back and I look back with regret. I feel bad for myself that I was too scared to do what I wanted. On the flip side, if I take the way that was scary, but it was something that excited me, then I look back on it and I'm like, yay me, I did the thing I wanted to do and it was scary, but it ended up being so wonderful. So trust your gut. And if you're in Branson, Missouri, if you're in Springfield, Missouri, anytime you're at a fork in the road, Pay attention to the one that leads you to where you want to go. Don't be afraid and just go in that direction. So that's me kind of wrapping up this episode of Retro Roadmap in a bit of a just drive your life way because I think it's important. I mean, we're all, if you think about it, all this road tripping we're talking about is how you like discover things about yourself. Like you discover how you're sweating like mad here. But you learn about yourself when you travel. You learn about yourself when you plan travel because you remind yourself of the things you like. Like, remember I said earlier, how, oh, gosh, I love the idea of a soda fountain. Other people may be like, I love baseball stadiums. And other people may be like, ooh, I want to go to like a cigar factory. Like, whatever. Learn about yourself and do the things that make you light up. Because when you're excited and lit up, like, look at me. I'm lit up because I'm schwitzing, but I'm all excited to share with you all this fun stuff. And I know I feel better after doing these episodes because I've got like the good energy in me because I'm all excited about the things that I love. And hopefully you are too. So don't we all want to have that energy and excitement in us about the things that are important? So pay attention to the destinations you want to go to. They're only going to be, they're going to be the ones that are important to you. When you go someplace because somebody else wants you to go there, you can feign it, but oh my gosh, like somebody says to me, oh, I want to go to, oh, I don't even know. Like it's just something that I'm not into. I'll be like, all right, 
Boy, this is fun. And how fun is that for me, for them? No. So follow your dreams. Drive in the direction of your dreams. And guess what? I'm going to sign off because my, my neighbor is starting to mow his lawn again. Okay? So thank you so much for showing up this week. I'm going to be back next week. Next week, I'm actually, I'm going to, I have a little fun thing to tell you about. I'm going to be on a Zoom call later that evening. But I'm showing up here. And it's going to be, I'm doing Iowa. Iowa. I'm going to do Iowa next week, okay? And um, goodbye from Maud Betty. Goodbye from my neighbor with the mower. Goodbye from the uh, neighbor who got his um, UPS thing. Goodbye from the UPS guy. Um, Maud Betty saying, just drive your life. Bye. <laughs>